Well, greetings, Mr. Colazar's class. Our last section we went from number of particles to moles. This section we're going to go between mass and moles and seeing how they're related. Make sure you have your gold packet out. We're going to need that today because we need our PT coming up. So have that out as we're going. So we're going to relate the mass of the atom to the mass of moles of an atom. And we're going to convert between moles and mass of any element or compound on the periodic table. So as we work, uh, one of the things we're going to look at is how one mole of carbon atoms and one mole of iron atoms contain the same number of atoms but different masses. Now why that is is even though they have the same number of atoms in one mole, they both have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles, the composition, the number of protons and neutrons they have is different, so their masses are different. So carbon, a much smaller atom, weighs much less than, say, the mole of iron atoms. So let's say you had like a dozen golf balls. versus a dozen ping pong balls. Both of them are 12. But the golf balls weigh way more than the ping pong balls do. There's much more mass in the golf balls even though they're the same amount one weighs much more than the other. So as we're going, atoms are just the same way. You might have the same amount of them, which is important, but they weigh differently, and so we're going to be looking into that today. So mass can be used to determine the amount of matter. So one of our ideas is, if you add some candy, this is going to be kind of just a, an idea that we had. Let's say you have a huge jar of jelly beans. And so in that jar of jelly beans, there just completely filled. You know, the jelly beans are all filled up in this container. Now, if we know the mass of one of the jelly beans, what we could do is we could find the mass of one jelly bean, and if we knew the mass of the entire container, if we were to divide the two by one another, so you did the mass of the container. over the mass of one jelly bean, you could find out approximately the number of jelly beans in the container. And that's basically what we're trying to do here, is except instead of jelly beans, we're using atoms and the amount of the full substance. It's just the difference is that the mass and the size of the atom is so small that we need to use that huge Avogadro's number to help us out as we're going. So we're going to come up with what we call the molar mass. And the molar mass is going to be the mass in grams of one mole of any substance. So we're going to look at it as one mole of X equals the number of grams of X. But we're going to have X represent any element on the periodic table and the mass is equal to the periodic table, or the mass number equals the mass for the periodic table. So to see this idea, if you were to pick out just a section of the periodic table, mass numbers on the periodic table, whichever number we choose, is the mass number. That mass number equals one mole of that element. So if you have one mole of carbon, 12.01, we've actually taken out this last decimal there. For most of these, surrounded oxygen to 16.00. So if you have one mole of carbon, you'd have 12.01 grams of carbon. If you have one mole 
of boron, you would have 10.81 grams of carbon. So remember a mole, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles, in this case atoms, if you had that, you would have 12.01 grams of carbon if you had that many atoms. Or if you were to weigh out on a scale, 12.01 grams of carbon, you'd have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles of it. So the periodic table, that mass number, can tell us if we had one mole of that substance, that's how much or how many particles you would have of it. So the molar mass of any given element is numerically equal to the atomic mass given on the periodic table. So the molar mass and the atomic mass, sometimes you hear it as the mass number, or atomic mass are the same idea. Um, an example of this, iron's atomic mass is 55.85 atomic mass units. This will be another thing coming up in a little while. What is the mass of one mole of iron? Now this is just extra info. It's not in our notes. But it's just showing us an idea. So if we had one mole of iron, this is the actual Avogadro's number 6.0221 times 10 to the 3rd, but we just take out this extra 10 to the 23rd moles of iron. And then we're going to take and just continue this on. It just doesn't quite fit on one line. So this just moves down one iron atom. 55.85 atomic mass units. The mass of one subatomic particle, either proton or neutron, is 6 times 10 to the 23rd. That's not shown exactly yet. And if we multiplied all that out, we would end up, that's supposed to be negative 23rd, sorry about that. That would multiply it out, we'd actually get an answer of 55.85 grams, which is the same as how many moles or atomic mass units we'd have. So that's just a little extra information. We're not going to be worried about that. So according to the periodic table, if you were to look at it, iron has an atomic mass of 55.85 atomic mass units. We use this as a scale for weighing atoms, or for subatomic particles, excuse me. Uh, too small for like pounds or ounces or grams to be used, so we call an atomic mass unit is going to be those units on the periodic table. Iron's molar mass, if you have one mole of a substance, it'd be 55.85 grams. If you measure out 55.5 grams of iron, it would equal one mole. So if you weighed it out, 55.85 grams, you would have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of iron. Atoms, iron, or 55.85 grams per mole. So if you measured out the one mole of iron, make sure it says iron, or 6.02 times 10 to 23rd atoms of iron, they'd all be the same idea. This would be your measurement if you had measured it out, and this is what we're going to call its molar mass. Molar mass is grams per mole of iron, and that number comes from the periodic table. So you'll need that. So when it comes to converting between moles, and molar mass, use molar mass. There's kind of a box on your table or in your notes. Make sure you include this information. First off, you're going to use what we call our molar mass. One mole of X equals grams of X from the periodic table. So you can set this up. One mole of X equals grams of X or grams of X over one mole of X are going to be your two conversion factors to be putting into your notes. Use your PT to find that atomic mass or mass number so that you can plug that in to the grams. 
for converting. So now what we're going to do is look at how we can convert between moles and mass. So using our ACE method, analyze, solve, evaluate, remember one mole of x equals a number of grams of x using our PT. So what is the mass of three moles of iron? So to begin with, we've been talking about iron. So analyze what is the mass is what we're solving for. If you're given three moles of iron, your starting point. So we're going to start out with three moles of iron. Now from your periodic table, we need to see the moles to mass ratio. So from the periodic table, one mole of iron is going to equal to 55.85 grams of iron. Moles will cancel moles, leaving us in the end with our grams of iron. 55.85 grams of iron equals one mole. So in the end, when we look to solve for this answer, three times 55.85 grams of iron. Grams of iron is our ending unit when it comes to evaluate. And three times 55.85, about 168 grams of iron. If you wanted to weigh out on the balance, if you were to weigh out three moles of iron, it would weigh 168 grams on the balance or on the scale. So let's just go the opposite way. How many moles of iron contains 75 grams of iron? So on this one, we're starting out analyze. We're wanting to find the moles of iron, and we're given 75 grams of it. So if we wanted to convert from mole grams to moles, we're going to use still one mole equals how many grams of iron. So our first step, 75 grams, our starting point. This time we're going to set up our conversion factor so that moles is on top grams of iron are on the bottom, 55.85 grams of iron, remember from our periodic table. Now this is set up so that our grams of iron can cancel grams of iron, leaving us with moles of iron. When we multiply numbers on top, divide by the numbers on bottom, it's kind of like a fraction, remember. So numbers on top are multiplied afterwards, we divide by the numbers on bottom, about 1.34 moles of iron is what we come up with to evaluate. Moles of iron is what we are looking to solve for. And then 75 divided by 55, number just over 1, 1 1.34 moles of iron would be if you weighed out 75 grams, how many you would have. For 19 and for 20, I would like you to work through these two problems first. After you work through these problems, then unpause and we'll go through just to make sure you're on the right track. So work through first and then afterwards then check over your answer. So go ahead and hit pause now and then we'll look through them. So our first step of the ACE model, going to analyze. So determine the mass of 3.75 moles of iron, or aluminum, excuse me. So we start out with 3.75 moles of aluminum is what we're given. Now to go from moles to grams, our moles will be on the bottom, one mole, periodic table, 26.98 grams of aluminum. Moles will cancel moles, leaving us with grams. When we multiply 3.75 times 26.98, we come up with about 96.32 grams of iron, or aluminum. So as we're going, 30, 3, 9, or 96.32 grams of aluminum evaluate. The one thing we can change up, 3.75. We could actually lose our last sig fig there since we have three sig figs to begin with. We can have three sig figs in our answer. So an evaluation, 96.3 grams of aluminum from 3.57 moles of aluminum. And our last one, 20. Convert 2.45 times 10 to the second moles of cobalt to grams. Now remember this is cobalt, C-O. 
not carbon monoxide so it's very careful that we want to make sure that we're looking at those correctly capital O our capital C little o for that one so to analyze this problem we are given 2.45 times 10 to the minus second moles of cobalt in mass and grams that we're trying to get to so to solve this one 2.45 times 10 to the negative second moles of cobalt and our conversion one mole of X to grams of X so since moles on top our mole conversion needs to go on the bottom one mole of cobalt equals 58.93 grams remember that's from the periodic table that's where we we'll always get that number from moles cancel moles leaving us with our math 2.45 times 10 to the negative second times 58.93 grams of cobalt in the end math wise to evaluate grams of cobalt mass and grams and 1.45 when we do our math small number times 58.43 or 58.93 excuse me equals 1.44 grams of cobalt now 21 and 22 and 23 we're gonna come back to so we're gonna skip them for now and we're gonna finish them after our next section